What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. Today is April 20th, 2017, a day that will live in infamy for the Buffalo sports world as now the Buffalo Sabres have decided to part ways with Sabres GM Tim Murray and Sabres head coach Dan Bowsma. Most Sabres fans, myself included, expected the Sabres to fire their head coach. Not so fast. Terry Pagula decides to fire both Tim Murray, the general manager, and Dan Bilesma. Where do the Sabres go from here? I'm going to talk about that. Uh, Cyrus Kawanju, um, and much more today on the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. We are one week outside of the NFL Draft, where the Buffalo Bills will pick 10th overall. Um, but today I want to dedicate this one to the Buffalo Sabres. Let's get started. So... The Sabres, as I mentioned, decide to fire Tim Murray and Dan Bilesma. Where was I when I heard the news? I was working today. I saw the news on Twitter. My buddy Scott Brown felt the need to call me while I was working, and uh, I told him I had to. Uh, I had to call him right back. So call him back. We talked back and forth about this situation, and um, one of the things that I mentioned to Scott that really bothered me uh, over the course of the last few days with this news. Since the end of season press conference by then Sabres GM Tim Murray uh, was the fact that Paul Hamilton of the WGR Sports Radio 550 Network, who has done a great job covering the Sabres uh, over the past you know decade or so, um, put out a report stating that Jack Eichel would have zero interest in returning to the Buffalo Sabres if the Sabres decide to bring back Dan Bilesma. Um, Jack Eichel's agent vehemently, you know, angrily denied this report, said that Jack never said this, this was never something that was said um, by Jack Eichel, and it was not. It was a fake, false report that was reported by Paul Hamilton. I don't know why this Buffalo sports media feels the need to to do this. Why do they feel the need to bring out false information? The fans um, of this team deserve much, much better uh, over the course of its franchise history. And I expected the fact that the media itself would cover this team in the fashion that it should. And they have not. The media itself inside of this area in western New York. And they have not. Um, you would assume that this team and the fans would have a common goal to, you know, basically the fans would support the team and the team would support the fans. And it's been ridiculous how WGR has kind of just given the fans false information time and time again. And I am tired of it. I'm tired of being a Sabres fan and having the Buffalo media in this area incite basically friction within both the Bills and the Sabres. The media is doing it now at the Buffalo Bills where they're asking who's in in real power. Is it Sean McDermott? Is it um, is it Sean McDermott? Is it um, you know Doug Whaley? Is it even Sean McDermott's team? Is it Doug Whaley's team? Is it Tim Murray's team? Is it Dan Bilesma's team? Is it Terry's team? They've been doing it the last, you know, two, three years. And and I'm getting really sick of, of turning on the radio, which I, I rarely do tune into WGR. Uh, but when I do, it's the same garble every single time. Those guys have been in public radio far too long, a lot longer than I've even been alive, to be doing that really report what's actual factual circumstance. Don't speculate to the point where our ears are bleeding over the course of the show. We're talking about stuff that's fake, that's not even real, and it's all just soap opera sports garble. And I'm just very sick of it. Paul Hamilton was wrong to report that. It was a huge mistake for anybody to buy into anything that he says. 
And this is the same guy that said as recently as three, four weeks ago that the Sabres should trade Evander Kane for, and I quote, little to nothing, just so someone can assume his contract. That is ridiculous. Why would we trade Evander Kane for little to nothing? Why would we trade Evander Kane at all? being that he was the only guy that really was consistent throughout the majority of the season, along with Jack Eichel. So I've had it you know, up to my ears talking about Paul Hamilton and WGR and Shope and the Bulldog. I'm getting really sick of, of their reporting every single day on this team where it's so negative. And you know what? Yes, it, they, they are right in that regard. There is plenty of reason to not feel positives about these teams, given the fact that they're constantly recycling and retooling coaches. Um, But I will say that that doesn't matter. Their opinion should not dictate what is actual factual news. And Jack Eichel's agent felt the urgency to go out of his way and talk to the Buffalo News and tell them that, hey, this is wrong. This was not said by Jack Eichel ever. This was a made-up report by a guy that has no source that is legitimate whatsoever. So that's where I stand on that. Jack Eichel said as much that he wants to be a part of this team. He wants to continue uh, the mission with the Buffalo Sabres. And let me read his quote. Uh, in, in specifically, he said, I want to be here for a long time. Eichel told the Buffalo News today, that's the way I look at it. I don't want to go anywhere else. I don't want anybody to think that I want to be somewhere else. I want to be a Sabre. I want to be a Sabre for a long time. And I want to be a part of Buffalo when we win. I know it's an organization that is capable of doing that. And I want to be a part of it. And I want to be a centerpiece of it. You know, that was the quote that Jack said to the Buffalo News, and that's that. So Paul Hamilton, please stop putting out fake stuff that is not even valid whatsoever, given the fact that Bilesma got fired that has zero to do with Jack Eichel. As much as the fans say that this is Jack's team, which it is, uh, on the ice, off the ice, this is Terry Pagula's team. Terry made the final decision to let go of Bilesma and Murray, not Jack Eichel. Jack Eichel didn't tell those guys that they were fired. Tim Murray did. So I get the fact that Jack Eichel is the is the face of this team. He's a franchise. But in actuality, Terry Pagula runs... It, everything goes to the beat of his drum. So let's stop with that. You know, th- there's a lot of pieces and layers to this story that are just ridiculous over the course of this week that I did not anticipate having to suffer through. And as as a fan and as a as a sports writer, I was pretty pretty uh shocked at not just the fact that Murray was fired, but the fact that Murray was fired, Bosma was fired, but the Buffalo media couldn't even get it right. They couldn't even give the Buffalo fans the right spin on everything. They had to make it about Jack wanting to be out of here, painting Jack in a T.O. like light as if he's some head case attitude brat. When really Jack Eichel has every right to be pissed off. He has every right to be pissed off that the Sabres are not where they need to be. And he, uh, of course, Jack Eichel does not want to be a part of a team that has to go through yet another NHL head coach and yet another NHL GM. And more on that later as far as who I think should be the the next guy, the, the next man up with the Buffalo Sabres. More on that later. But all the fans that are saying that this is Jack's team, of course it's Jack's team. He's the future of this team, bar none, but... Terry made that final decision. That was Terry's decision, not Jack's. Terry said, you're fired to Tim Murray and to Dan Bilesma. Now, you know, this gives us, this gives me a lot to talk about for a long time until the day that the Sabres decide to 
bring somebody in and hire somebody to replace both Murray and Bilesma. But I will say that you know you get you do got a feel for Bilesma and Murray. You know they they wanted to win here. They wanted to do what they can here to to bring a winner here, and it just did not happen. And a lot of fans are, you know, waving them goodbye. But at the same time, these people have lives. They dedicated their time here. I appreciate their efforts, but it just did not work out. So here we are again. Buffalo Sabres decide to make this move. You got to look at what is next. What is ahead for the NHL teams? What is ahead for the Sabres? Whoever comes in as the GM, and I'm going to, get to who I think would be a perfect fit. Whoever comes in as the GM of the Buffalo Sabres has a lot of work to do. The expansion draft with the Vegas Golden Knights is coming soon. There is the draft at hand. There's contracts that need to be re-signed or let go. There's a lot of decisions that are made by NHL GMs each and every day. And as of now, the Buffalo Sabres have their assistant GM to Tim Murray in that role until they bring somebody in. So I think Terry and Kim are going to be working hard, fast, not too fast though, but faster than normal at bringing in somebody that can, that can make these decisions right away. And I think I know who they should bring in, but I'm going to save that for the next part. Obviously, there's chatter about Lindy Ruff coming in for coaching. I don't think that's going to happen. I want to diffuse that right now. As cute of a story as it would be to have Lindy Ruff back in Buffalo, and I and I did love Lindy Ruff when he was here. He did a lot for the Sabres organization, winning his Sabres head coach, I'm pretty sure, given the amount of time that he spent here, was really the last guy to bring the Sabres to any sort of respectability. Um, I, I, I love Lindy Ruff. I think he's a great guy, great coach, but the Sabres moved on from him for a reason. They are where they are for a reason, and Lindy Ruff is not the guy that is capable of fixing that. So that being said, you know, you got to look towards bringing in a coach, bringing in a coach that can inspire these young players, bringing in a coach that brings life to this team. And I think that there are a few guys out there. Kevin Deneen is a guy that, that interests me. He's had ties to this area and everything. He has been a coach in the NHL that has been lobbying for a head coaching job. Um, there's obviously uh, Phil Housley for the Buffalo Sabres. And Phil Housley, as I stated a few days ago, is the guy that I would like to bring in. Former Buffalo Sabre has been hitting the uh, head coaching ranks, getting closer and closer to a head coaching role as time has gone on. The assistant head coach for the Nashville Predators uh, behind Peter LaViolette. I like Phil Housley, one of my dad's favorite players, so I know, you know there's some bias here with that. But I will say he has kind of bridged the gap. Of, of moving up the head coaching ranks. And I think that's important. I think it's important to have a guy that has actual real coaching experience that has continued time and time again to show that his style, his defensive prowess, has worked at the NHL level. Look at the Nashville Predators right now. The Predators are putting it all on the line against the Chicago Blackhawks right now in the playoffs. They look physical, they look brash, they look ready, they look hungry. And that's what the Sabres need. They need a coach that can inspire, they need a coach that can work with young players and build up the defense of this team. It's funny how both the Sabres and the Bills need defense on these teams more than anything. They're kind of at the same point. They have some offensive pieces, they have some offensive firepower, but their defense is what's lacking. And Terry has to get it right with both teams. It's pretty amazing how Tim Murray is out of a job and Doug Whaley still has one. That's where I end part one of today's show, the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. Thank you all for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I'll be back coming up after the commercial break to talk about the Buffalo Bills 2017 season schedule.